This video is presented by the EA Creator Network. Big thanks to EA for allowing me early access to FIFA 22. Hello, what up guys? How you doing? It is Lasty here. Welcome, welcome today to a new FIFA 22 Ultimate Team video. Overpower players you need to use. It's another one that I do every single year and you guys always seem to lap it up. So, what I've got for you today is a whole bunch of squads um, of different levels of like overpowered players. So what we're going to start with is uh, is like off leagues, really cheap, low rated overpowered players that you might want to use in your starter teams. Uh, and then as we go through the video, things will become a little bit higher rated, a little bit more expensive um, for those of you that either start with FIFA points or as we progress through the first couple of weeks, months of the game. If you do enjoy, smash the thumbs up button. Keep subscribing to the channel as well because we have, we just clocked over another thousand subscribers recently. So that's absolutely amazing. Thank you very, very much. Uh, and yeah, like I said, smash that thumbs up button. Let's get trending for gaming again uh, because we did yesterday. Now, let's get into this, shall we? So I need to click my game screen so that I'm not, not showing you <laughs> the players. So here we go. This is, this is my first squad batch of players that are like for starter use, okay? So we start with Raja 9 Golan. Yes, you may look at that 71 pace, 74 defending. This isn't the most overpowered card you could possibly use, but very well-rounded. And I imagine he's probably going to be pretty cheap considering nowadays he's in the Belgian Pro League. So there's just a little tip for you that, you, you know, maybe you could get someone like that in your squad. Um for a quite well-rounded midfielder who isn't going to be that sought after. Next up, Bakambu. Bakambu is always a pretty good option. At 90 pace, 80 shooting at the start of the game and four-star skill moves, I can see a lot of people wanting to get their hands on a little player like that because, again, he's not going to cost much. Uh, and, of course, I think you can link him in the Chinese Super League to, to this fella right here. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that name correctly because I'm terrible at it, but... Four-star skill moves, 94 pace, 81 dribbling. Yes, please. We now move into the Eredivisie. Now, this league could be pretty amazing for the start of the game um, because there are a few gems here, mostly for Ajax, actually, I'm pretty sure. But I'm sure there are a few others that you could link him to. Anthony looks good. Five-star skill moves. Yeah, only a three-star weak foot. I don't think that's going to matter too much. With starter players, you're always going to want to stick to their strong foot no matter what. Um, but 91 pace, 84 dribbling, five-star skills. For Ajax, who could link to this man right here, Ryan Gravenberch. Now, this card is pretty sensational. Four-star, four-star, six-foot-three, 82 dribbling. 77 pace is not bad at the start of the game. Very, very well-rounded. Uh, and he actually gets a strong or even a perfect link to this guy. It's going down. I'm yelling, Timber. I mean, you guys love that, right? Surely you're going to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button purely for that line alone. But Timber has 83 pace as a centre-back with 75 dribbling and good defending and physical stats. He's not the tallest, but that's a... That's a really good defender right there. Um, so I think him and Gravenberch with that perfect link, a lot of people are going to try and take advantage of that early game whilst a player like this is still relevant and, and, and good to use. Speaking of Dutch, but moving away from a different league, we have Quincy Promise now in the Russian league. Um, unfortunately downgraded in skill moves this year, but still looks a pretty good talent. You could link him to this guy right here. Same team, uh, 80 pace centre back. Not bad. I, I can't imagine that's going to cost you too much either. Um, and then just as that, I wanted to throw it in there. Uh, Mislav Orsic is always pretty good. 90 pace, 82 shooting at the start of the game. Good luck linking him though from his nation because he is in the, uh, in the Croatian league, which uh, is not the easiest to link. Um, so I've accidentally come out and shown you all of the players there. But oh well, it doesn't matter. Uh, next we move over to Liga Nos. Now in Liga Nos, it's a pretty good starter league. Uh, we've got Pepe with 80 pace. Like a plus 14 pace increase for this guy this year. How has that happened well, as he continues to age? Um, that's kind of nuts to me, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, and then he could get a strong link to Rafa. Rafa's got four-star skills, 94 pace. You know the drill. Another good centre-back in this league. Lucas Ver Verissimo. 
I mean, that's just a great name. 81 pace, 80 defending, six foot two. That's a tall, fast centre back right there. And there's lots of good Brazilians in the Portuguese league as well. Jetson Fernandes, is that the same club? Yeah, same club uh, as the centre back there. So a nice, well rounded centre midfielder. Uh, obviously, you guys will probably know him more for playing for Tottenham last season uh, and was a good Premier League starter player. But now he's in the Liga Nos. And then just as always, Anderson, Talisca, and Paulinho, good uh, strong link combo. Um, are they? Yeah, they are. They're both in the in the Saudi league at the moment, right? Yeah. So they're a good uh, strong link combo. Nice, well-rounded stats again. Uh, and then just to wrap things up here, Joseph Martinez in the MLS. Only three-star skills, but decent pace and shooting. Always pretty good on the game. So that was my first squad of OP players. Let's move into, let's take it up a notch, right? So we're talking still like the lower rated, hopefully cheap ones, but now from the main leagues, all right? So yeah, you'll see all the players here for a moment, but we'll just go through. If we start in the Prem, you, there are a couple of very good center mid CDM type options in the Prem this year who are pretty quick. We've got Mwepu here from uh, Brighton uh, and then Onyeka from... Uh, Brentford, that is, that, that's a, is it Brentford? Yeah, it is Brentford. Um, and uh, very, very, very pacey uh, for like starter players in the Prem. So I think a lot of people might end up using players like that. Uh, we then have obviously Adama Traore in the Prem, 96 pace, 86 dribbling, you know the drill there. And ASM, five star skill moves, very, very fast, very good at dribbling. Yeah, they might not have the best shooting. But these are OP starter players, that is for sure. That's like the definition of an overpowered player. Um, Lucas Moura looks good this year. Lower rated. And uh, I think people are... Is he lower rated? He might not be, actually. I can't remember. Was he an 83 last year? Or, or was that a few years ago? I forget. I forget. Um, but four star, four star. Good pace and dribbling. Actually, very good shooting as well. A 79 early game is good. Um... And then Jota, slightly slower, but more well-rounded. And the four-star, five-star. That's pretty important. Portuguese links in the Prem are going to be quite useful as well. Uh, just simply because of, like, Ronaldo, Bruno Fernandes, all of that good stuff. Uh, and then we talk about Wilfred Zaha. Great starter player. Very, very good on the ball. Very fast. And the five-star skills. And then we have Leon Bailey. This, for me, might be... Someone I really aim to get. I've always loved him on FIFA. Uh, he's just such a great player. And he's now in the Prem for Villa. And he scored a couple of goals as well early, early this season, which is brilliant for him. Four-star, four-star, very good pace and dribbling. Good shooting, just generally well-rounded for a, a fast winger. And then, obviously... 81 pace, Joe Gomez at centre-back uh, is, is, is what a lot of people are going to want to use. He's going to be expensive, but is he OP? Yes, absolutely yes. So moving on from the Prem... We are now in the French League. Boadu, uh, you guys might remember he got an inform last year. was pretty good for a little bit of time. Uh, but five-star weak foot, very, very fast. Other than that, not too much to be said, but he's not going to cost you a ton. Gwenduzi this year actually looks quite good for a CDM-type player. Uh, nice and well-rounded. Not the slowest, not the quickest, but six foot one. Going to be all right. Uh, and French links in league are always quite useful. Jelson Martins, I mean... What I'm, get, what I'm getting here is that you could potentially build a pretty good Portuguese team uh, at the start of the game for not too many coins and get yourself a few beasts. Jelson Martins looks very good. 93 pace, five-star skills. Um, Gerson or Gerson, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but another kind of like Gwenduzi, like nicely well-rounded player, actually plays for the same club as Gwenduzi. You could have yourself a little... Uh, center mid of Marseille players there, and it'll be pretty rock solid. And then we have uh, Jason Denier. He is going to be denying every single goal with that 83 pace and very, very good defending and physical stats. This is a fantastic center back, uh, and I imagine his early game price is going to be a little bit high. Renato Sanchez, this also goes along to uh, why the Portuguese nation might be quite good to start this game off, because look at that card. Very, very good. We know how he plays in game. What a player. Four star, four star. Let's hope he gets another crazy card at some point during this year because he's always a uh, he's always a great one to use. Uh, and let's move over to Serie A. I thought Weston McKenney looked amazing. Super well rounded. Very fast for a CDM who's six foot tall uh, or centre mid, should I say? He's going to boss it. He's going to be like a great box to box player at the start of the game. We then have Tamori, of course. 
uh, 82 pace for AC Milan. Uh, he's very, very good. Six foot one. Uh, I would like to use him, but there is a triangle of him, Luca Hernandez, and, oh, sorry, Theo Hernandez, and then also Kessie. There's a triangle of players there, which is going to keep this guy's price up, I think, which is a little bit unfortunate, but OP nonetheless. Hartabua, nice and well-rounded with good pace. Could be like, could play him at centre mid. Uh, and then Zielinski there, four-star, five-star this year. Again, nice and well-rounded. Not the greatest of physicals, but good at moving on the ball. Maybe you don't play him as a proper CDM. Maybe you play him as a centre mid. The Muriel. Look at this card. This this is this is one of the best strikers on the game, early game. Yeah, he's not like 95 pace or anything. Uh, but amazing pace, dribbling, and shooting for a player that's only 82 rated and four star, four star. Gonna see a lot of people using Muriel, I'm pretty sure. <coughs> right, that was uh, OP squad number two. So let's move on to OP squad number three. Now, this is where we take it up a notch. Um, again, let's, let's take it up a notch one more time. Or actually, sorry, it isn't. It's where we continue with the main leagues. <laughs> My bad. There's a lot of like mid-range players um, from the good leagues. So we've only done Prem, um, Liga and Serie A so far. We need to go into the Bundesliga and La Liga. I've put Silas in here because, uh, you know, the, Dari the, the Danny Aaron's effect. Uh, he might not be the best player at the start of the game, but he is very tall. He's got five-star skills. He's quick with good dribbling as well. Uh, so I think might hold a little bit of a higher price simply because of the Danny Aaron's effect. Uh, we then have St. Just. Um, and that is St. Just a great card. Ooh, I hope you like these little word puns that we're going with today. But 91 pace as a starting centre-back. Huh? This guy's going to hold a high price. You know it. Just simply because of that pace stat. Good dribbling as well for a centre-back. Uh, Tyler Adams. Again, looks pretty good. You don't want to take a shot with him. He's only got 48 shooting. But high, high work rates. 81 pace. I think he can hold down the midfield quite well. Uh, Bebu is always a tough one at the start of the game uh, with his pace and dribbling uh, and four-star skill moves. And the fact that he's six foot tall, it's just difficult to deal with. Lacroix, Lacroix, however you want to say his name. Lacroix, if, if you're terrible at pronouncing names like me. Uh, six foot three, 88 pace. Oh, dear Lord, what have we here? It looks as though the Bundesliga is the go-to league for very overpowered starter players. But they aren't going to be cheap. People know this. And, of course, they are going to have a high price with that. But what a centre-back. He's going to be rampant this year. I think people are going to use him left, right, and centre. Jude Bellingham looks great for the start of the game. I really, really hope this guy... Uh, has the bright future ahead of him like it seems like he's going to have uh, because we could be in for some fantastic fuck cards. And as an Englishman, it's good to know that the future is someone like Jude Bellinger because what a player. What an absolute player. Six foot one, holding down that midfield. I'm looking forward to actually giving him a go. Uh, Klosterman, 85 pace. You know, it's, it's slow compared to St. Just and Lacroix. But, uh, you know, people are still going to want to use him, including me. He looks pretty solid. Akanji, another 80-plus pace centre-back in the Bundesliga. Uh, probably going to be a little bit cheaper, simply because he's 81 pace, not 91 pace. But still, super solid, and I think people will pay a fairly hefty price for him. Uh, Zakaria, obviously same nation as Akanji, and as well as Mbabu, who I think I've forgotten to put in here. But there's a really good triangle of low-rated Bundesliga Swiss players, uh, which means that they might, again, be a little bit more expensive. Because look at this card, six foot three, eighty-three pace. Whew, that is rapid. Uh, and then Doniel Marlin. Uh, I I spotted this player and thought, you know what? I really want to get hold of this guy for my RTG. I think he looks like such a good starter striker. 90 pace with the four-star skill moves, good, good dribbling, and uh, his shooting is... He'll be fine. He'll be pretty good in game. You know, 82 finishing at the start of the game. That's solid. That is really solid. So, uh, yeah, Doniel Marlin. Uh, and let's, uh, I thought we were done with the Bundesliga, but actually there's still a couple more. Alfonso Davies, four-star, four-star left back. I mean, I, do you know what? I hope at some point during this year they give him like a card that isn't a left back. Um, whether or not he ends up pushing up and getting like a left wing card at some point. Or just in one of those promos where they change the position of a player. I hope they give him like a CDM. It'd be insane. Uh, and then, yeah, Emre Chan looks like such a great centre mid in the Bundesliga. But he's not going to be cheap uh, at all. I know I've said that a lot this video, but he certainly isn't. Oh, my alarm has gone off for me to wake up. Pretty good that I'm already up filming a video then, isn't it? Um, 
We move to La Liga, which is the final league for these mid-tiers before we go up to the next highest tier. Uh, Ar Araujo? Uh, Araujo? Araujo? I don't know. Six foot four, seventy-seven pace. Not bad for a Barca card. Dribbling's a bit suspect, but a little bit of pace there. I don't think he's going to cost a whole bomb, um, but looks like a pretty good card. And I forgot that, yeah, I swapped him and Upa Makano around. Another 80-plus centre-back for you in the Bundesliga. Uh, but Mateus Cunha looks very good. I think this was the guy that was at West Brom, if I'm not remembering incorrectly. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, 85 pace, 84 dribbling, 4-star, four 4-star, four 6 foot tall. Going to be quite good at the start of the game. Vinicius Jr. Uh, as Obviously, as I'm recording this, I don't know what like the team of the week is. People are suggesting that he might get in the team of the week. And could potentially be one of those feature team of the weeks where he gets a double boost. If so, this card will be very expensive at the start of the game because he won't be out. You know, the gold won't be out in the first week. But um, 95 pace, 87 dribbling, five star skills. Don't expect him to be cheap. Uh, I would say. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna be great. Obviously, a strong link to to Mendy at the back as well. Um, Inyaki Williams, always a good starter player. The, the weak foot does let him down, but he's got. Such good, like, physical 83 strength at the start of the game with that pace, that that height, the shooting. <clears throat> He's always such a monster to play against. I hate it. So, uh, yeah, I'm not looking forward to playing against him. But Diego Carlos might be able to defend him quite well. Always a pretty solid option on the game and looks pretty good again this year. Eda Militao looks almost better than ever. 83 pace, 83 defending, 82 physical, 6 foot 1. Definitely going to be people buying him this year to link to... Um, to, to link to, uh, obviously, Furlong Mendy, who I think is an 83, which I stopped the cap here at 82 rated, and now we'll go on to the final squad of OOP players who are 83 and above. Um, so this final squad, for some reason I couldn't call it OP4. It said it was a censored word. I don't know if I've, I'm missing something there. But uh, yeah, we move on to what are going to be expensive players, but still very, very good on the game. We'll start in the Prem. Kyle Walker. Marcus Rashford, you know the drill. These guys are great every year. Five-star skills on Rashford. Uh, Varane this year is obviously, uh, once again, going to be amazing. And has all those Man United links, which people are going to love. Raheem the Dream, four-star skill moves. But he just moves so well. And he's got such a tiny, slender body type that he just, like, weaves in and out. Wouldn't mind getting him early game because he will absolutely tear it up. I promise you. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, yeah, I mean, you might not want to call him overpowered, but he's going to be great in the Prem and all, all year long in this game. I know they've downgraded him. I know he's got 87 pace, 88 dribbling now. I feel like that is a bit harsh, but I think it's more of a rating cr uh, correction. Maybe he should have been that last year, and then people wouldn't have seen it as such a downgrade if he stayed at 91 this year. But, oh well, I, I love that he's in the Prem. Uh, I'm, if, you know, I kind of like Man United. Uh, I like Man United and Liverpool the most in the Prem, which is weird for for fans of those teams because normally they're quite they're quite a rivalry between the two. But I support Ipswich Town. Um, I do I do like Man United, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean this is just it's nice to see him there. I'm sure he's still going to be great on this game. Moving on to League One, we have Maestro Kimpembe. Uh, we have this man looks great. PSG in general. Just nutty. Uh, so I don't expect Kimpembe to be cheap simply because he has such good links. And he is probably one of the most usable centre-backs in this league alongside Marquinhos. Uh, Hakimi, unreal player. <laughs> really well-rounded and 95 pace. Yeah, he's he's going to be used a lot simply because of the links. Um, but obviously, the thing with Ligue 1 is that you, if you have the top-tier players like... As we get on to Mbappe, Neymar, it's like left wing striker. So they're up here and then Hakimi's down here. So it's difficult to get the links. Maybe people will play him off chem at left back to get a link to Neymar. I can see that happening. Uh, but yeah, I mean, these guys, Marquinhos, Mbappe looks phenomenal this year. Might be one of the best gold cards we've ever had. Um, and then Neymar will undoubtedly be one of the best in the game, uh, if not the best like usable player at the uh, for the first few months of this game before we start getting loads of special items because we love Neymar. He's an RTG legend, so hopefully we can get hold of him again this year. I think he's going to be very expensive though. Leo Messi, uh, right wing PSG cards. Uh, it still looks odd to me, but obviously with that dribbling, shooting, passing, he is gonna he's gonna wiggle his way through. We don't know much about the gameplay just yet, but I'm sure Messi will still tear it up. 
Uh, and here we get on to uh, the Serie A. So uh, this is part of that triangle I mentioned. Kessier, uh, just very, very solid stats overall. Um, and gets that link to Tamori, gets that link to Theo Hernandez, who, once again, is super well-rounded with incredible pace. Higher rated this year. He's going to be... Uh, going to be a costly fella because obviously people like to use french players and uh, also having that triangle is just not going <laughs> not going to help his price. Uh Koulibaly this year only 86 rated but 81 pace. Actually almost looks better this year than he has done in a few a few years uh, when he was a higher rated card just because that pace that looks great uh and I think he could be pretty usable. He's a he's a man mountain as well at 6 foot 2. Dybala, going to be solid, uh, but of course doesn't have that strong link to Ronaldo this year, which is a little bit of a letdown. The, the attack side of things in Serie A is, is a bit boring now that uh, Ronaldo's gone. But hopefully EA will just bring some cool special cards out that, that addresses that. On to the Bundesliga then, second to last league. We have Leroy Sane, looks good as always. Uh, yeah, weak foot might let him down, but uh, this man was... I, I, I called him the Rocket Man last year because he was just so quick. He got past everyone. Something about his body type and everything just got past defenders. So uh, what a player. Goretzka, I think this is the first ever gold card to start the game as Club 80, which is a pretty mean feat. He is going to cost you a fortune, but is going to be insane. This is like Hullet, Hullet Gang to begin with at the start of, of FIFA. That's insane. Uh Bayern obviously have lots of great links. You, if you wanna, if you wanna link this guy to um, to Alfonso Davies, you've got one of the best left backs and one of the best centre mids. You can play this guy CDM centre mid Cam if you really wanted to. I wouldn't recommend it, but you could. He's literally got better shooting than he has defending. But uh, as a box to box centre mid, you're looking at one of the best here for sure. Erling Haaland, I just got a feeling he's going to be OP this year. I know 80 dribbling, three star, three star doesn't sound good, but. That pace, that shooting, that body type, that the, the, the weird run style, I think he's going to just tear it up. And I kind of really want to use him. On to the last league, which is La Liga. <clears throat> we have Koundé, uh, 81 pace, good dribbling, good defending there. He's not the tallest, but a good French centre-back in La Liga, getting a strong link to this man, Ferlon Mendy, uh, who, of course, gets a strong link to... L.A. Militao to Vinicius Jr. Four star, five star. We know the drill. Furlong Mendy is ridiculous. Uh, Valverde looks great this year. A triangle of um, Ede Militao, Furlong Mendy, Valverde is going to cost you a pretty penny, but it'll be insane. It'll be insanely usable. Very well rounded, fast player there. Usman Dembele. Uh, Somehow keeps the 83 rating, which I found a bit odd, but still five star, five star and super usable. This is like the cheap Neymar at the start of the game. Not that he's going to be cheap, but he will be a lot cheaper than Neymar. Uh, if we could pack someone like this early game, I would be so happy because you could see he's just going to be brilliant. He's going to be absolutely class. And then I think this is the last player I've put in here. Marcos Lorente nearly joins Goretzka as club 80. Just two defending off. Uh, but yeah, he, he's now a walkout. He's moved from an 82 right back to an 86 centre mid. What a year it's been for him. What a glow up that is. Uh, yeah, fantastic player. Had one of the best cards at the end of last year's game with that green card, whatever it was. Uh, and looks like he's going to be a menace once again in FIFA 22. So there you go, guys. That is That was uh, my take on overpowered and fantastic players that you can use and you need to use on FIFA 22. Uh, thank you for watching. If you found this useful, do me a favor and smash the thumbs up. Maybe we found a couple of gems that you didn't know about. Uh, and maybe you've just like helped to decide what sort of route you want to go down for your team. Smash the thumbs up button. Let's get loads of traction on this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well if you're new. You can also find my um, social media, like my Twitter and Instagram. They're all down below. Uh, other than that, yeah, I mean, I'll be back later on today with another video for you. Uh, and I guess I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Peace.